you have a Prism application and you're trying to use the view model locator, but for some reason it's just not working. Well, turns out you're not following the naming convention that Prism is expecting. So what do you do? Do you go and change every single class and namespace in your application just to meet what Prism expects? Heck no, that'd be crazy. Instead, why don't you tell Prism how you have your app built and change the convention to meet your requirements? Hi, this is Brian Lagunas, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can change the naming convention for the view model locator. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Infragistix, fast and beautiful UI controls and time-saving tools for developers and UX pros. They really do provide the fastest path to amazing experiences. If you're looking for the fastest grids and charts on the market, or just looking for some new modern components to spruce up your application, look no further. Give Infragistix a try. Open up your favorite web browser, navigate to bit.ly slash prism infragistix and tell them that Prism sent you. The more people that use this link, the more videos that I get to record. So let's give Infragistix a big thank you, visit their site, and check out their products. Here we have a very simple WPF application with a single view called main page with a view model called main page view model. Now, as you can see, we are using Prism's view model locator to create an instance of our view model and set the data context at runtime. So I'm assuming looking at this text block, we have a title property in our view model, which we do, and it is set to hello prism world value. So let's go ahead and run the application and see what happens. Well, as you can see, it's not working. Why is it not working? I mean, in the last video we did covering the prism view model locator, it, everything just worked perfectly. What's going on? Well, let's take a closer look. As you can see, our main page is actually in a pages namespace. Now remember the convention for view model locator. The convention says it needs to be in a views namespace, but here we have pages. And if we look at our view model, our view model is in a page models namespace. Well, this obviously is not the convention that the prism view model locator is expecting. So this means that you are using a custom naming convention in your application. So you need to tell Prism about your new naming convention so it can resolve your view models properly. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. It's actually quite simple. Let's go into our app.xaml.cs. Now what we want to do is we want to override configure view model locator. Now, in order to change the convention, we need to say view model location provider. We're going to add a using statement here. Dot, you ready for this one? Set default view type to view model type resolver. Whoo, that is a mouthful. So let's go ahead and define our resolver. So this is what the resolver definition is going to look like. It's going to take a little anonymous method here. It's going to provide you with the view type. And so for now, let's return null so we can actually do a build. But what we're going to wind up returning is the type of the view model itself that we're going to be creating. But since we're using a different naming convention, we have to create our rules, if you will. So let's start by creating a prefix. So we'll say var prefix equals view type dot full name replace. And we're going to replace dot pages with dot page models. Okay, so we're basically saying, you know, our views are in this pages namespace. So we get the full name of the view, which contains the namespace, pages. And we're gonna replace that with page models, okay? So that's gonna give us the, the namespace of the location of the view model. Now, we're gonna say var view assembly name. We're gonna go view type 
get type info, and this is using reflection, assembly, that full name. Now we had the view assembly name. Next, we're going to create the view model name. Now the view model name, we're going to say is the prefix, right? With view model, comma, what assembly, in this case, it's in the same assembly as the view. And then we're going to return type dot get type view model name. Okay, so let's take a quick second to just really think about what's going on. So the first thing we do is we get the view type, okay? And we replace pages with page models. So that's gonna give us, if we look at our view here, so we have view model locator pages.main page. So this will now turn into page models, which puts us into the namespace where our view models are located. Next, we get the view assembly name because we're going to be creating a fully qualified type. So we're just storing that off to use. Then we have the view model name. So we're taking our prefix. Now remember, the prefix now is view model locator dot page models dot main page. That's the prefix. So we're expecting to append view model to the end of that. So if we look at our view model, we're going to have view model locator dot page models dot main page view model. That's where we're getting that. So that's going to create the fully qualified name of this view model. So we create the fully qualified type here, and then we simply resolve an instance of that type and return it to the resolver. So now let's go ahead and run this application, and hopefully everything functions as we would expect. And just like that, it works like a charm. We modified Prism's view model locator to use our new custom naming convention. And now all of our view models will be resolved and assigned to the data context as we would expect. Now, there are more features that we could use for the view model locator for custom registrations. And I'll cover that in a different video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you're notified when new videos are published. And thanks for watching.